Windsurf exploded onto the scenes a couple of weeks ago, being boasted as a cursor killer by many. I've had to put these bold claims to the test. After an intense week of windsurf usage, I've broken down their critical differences into these five categories that actually matter to developers. I'll also share why certain subtle features in cursor made me stay despite being genuinely impressed by windsurf's capabilities. In this video, I won't be walking through every single one of the features in a lot of detail. I'll be focused on comparing the differences between the features within cursor and windsurf. Given that they are both forks of VS Code, most of the UI is actually quite similar. I've even set my editor colors to look different just so that I can distinguish between them when I use them on a daily basis. The first category that we'll be looking at is code quality. Windsurf and Cursor don't develop their own models for code completion, and they mainly use models by Anthropic and OpenAI. In most cases, they default to Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which is an amazing LLM for code output. And because they share the same model underneath the hood, the code quality differences are not that big. Even both are trying to optimize prompts in a lot of places. It doesn't make a huge difference in terms of code. The main difference that makes code generation different and accurate is the context that you put in. So without considering that aspect, just looking at code quality alone, both editors come at a tie. Next, we'll be looking at context. Context is really the killer feature here for Windsurf when it first released. Windsurf calls their multi-file code editing tool Cascade. In Cursor, the equivalent is Composer. One of the biggest differentiators for Windsurf at launch was the fact that it can decide on the context without you having to explicitly prompt it at the very beginning. Very interestingly, Cursor quickly caught up with their own release Windsurf was on just released about two or so weeks ago, and the cursor came up with the same feature just two weeks later, and with a lot of the matching capabilities together with Windsurf. If you look at some of the example runs here, it feels like it's doing kind of O1 preview type inference, where it looks at the file, analyzes, and then proceeds on the action, rather than just, oh, hey, I got given this in context, and then decide what to do, right? So that does seem to make AI outputs better code than it used to. Another cool workflow that Windsurf demoed was the ability for Cascade to just continue your work. So you could specify that you're already working on some code and you were doing some like renaming or refactoring of the code. Inside of Cascade, you can just type continue what I was working on. And because it understands that context of the files you just touched and the edits that you just made, so it's able to continue the work without any explicit prompt. I've tried that in practice. It works well with smallish tasks, uh, like the aforementioned one renaming. But when you're working on a complex feature, you can't expect AI to just be able to guess all of the context of the things that you have to work on. Because at the end of the day, if you wanted to do a good job, you need to give it very explicit specification and context on what it needs to do. Say you've just started implementing a feature, it might guess that you're implementing search, but you might just be trying to implement a new model rather than actually doing search. So the guesses would be completely wrong. And while I see this as a huge convenience feature, and it works great in practice for small things, for large feature implementations, be sure to still give it a spec. While wow, Windsurf did great in a lot of these auto context tools, but all, a lot of their other tools still lacked quite a bit. For example, the doc search doesn't exist. Internet search doesn't exist. I can see what Windsurf team is trying to do is they are trying to hide a lot of this manual work underneath the hood so that you can rely on Windsurf to figure all of these things out. But until those features are added or have the, that auto context capabilities for docs and search to be added. You really have to give users those manual tools to shove things in so that they can get the context without those features being implemented. So in this case, I think Cursor does a lot better by giving users just a lot of picks and shovels to achieve the outcome, even though a lot of the workflow aren't as automated as Windsurf, but they are far more convenient by having the feature rather than not giving you a tool at all. The other really convenient feature that's in Cursor is the ability to mention the current diff, the working state of your current branch. Those things are extremely convenient if you just want to review the code, if you want AI to figure out the context of your change and continue. 
a nice small feature to keep in there. I really like how Cursor is implementing things by making sure users have all of the tools available at their disposal. And while many users might not discover the Goat tools because they are terrible at writing documentation, they are there once you discover it. After Winsurf released all of those auto context capabilities, I think Cursor quickly realized that was a problem for them. So they quickly follow up with their own release. So in the latest version, this is not even an edge for Windsurf anymore. Based on my experience inside the agent mode for Composer, which is their auto context implementation inside of Cursor, I think it's already on par with each other. But with all of the other context tools that Cursor has added that users can directly reference and customize, I think Cursor has a slight edge in the context department here as well. If I was just making the video a week ago, Windsurf would be winning out. But you can see how fierce the competition is in the AI code editor landscape right now. Moving on to the next category, capabilities. This was an area that Windsurf was just winning about a week ago, but now both are on par. One of the biggest new tool inside Windsurf sleeves is the capability to run commands directly as part of that cascade execution. So let's say you were adding a new UI component and you were leveraging ShaCN for the component library and it will be able to say, oh, I've added this new thing and this uses a modal component that didn't exist in your code base. And here's the command that you need to run to add the ShaCN component. Would you like to do it? Confirm. It runs a command. So this works for new libraries. While you know, copy and pasting command wasn't a huge issue, but just having that integrated as part of the AI code generation makes it so much smoother in terms of experience. And again, clearly Cursor saw this was an amazing feature and they quickly followed up with their own version as well. And so now inside the agent mode for Composer in Cursor, it has the exact same capability across the board. Um, you already see, you know, multi-file editing is already a thing in both editors. So that is not a huge mention here. I'd love to see the new capabilities that these editors end up adding to the AI chats. And I'd love to see the capability to not just run commands, but long running commands. It's able to just restart the dev server with new configurations without you having to go to the command line. Or it has the capability to access the terminal that you're already in to say, oh, this thing is already running. Let me just change these parameters. The web search capability is a thing that I'd love to see both editor adding very quickly. Let's say if you're using a very new library or if you want to implement based on a best practice that you've seen on the internet, being able to mention a link specifically or mention specific websites for code that you want to copy or styles that you want to implement, that would be so convenient when you don't have to copy and paste things from either ChatGPT search, perplexity, or directly from the web page into the chat. Having that directly implemented would be great. I think Cursor is already quite close to it because they already have the internal tools. All they need to do is link up their search and docs tool inside this agent mode to achieve that. So until the new features are implemented, I'd say in the capabilities department, both Cursor and Windsurf are tied at the moment. Moving on to the next category is UX. To me, the UX department is what sets one AI tool apart from another, because if they're mostly using the same LLM model underneath code quality and capabilities are going to be very close. But UX, while many can say that, oh, these are the easy thing that can copy, but they are the core experience of your developer's everyday workflow. One thing I love from both editors is the fact that as you go through multi stages in your chat, both create checkpoints every time it makes a code modification. In Windsurf, if you go back to modify a prompt, it was automatically restore the code to the state it was in at that point. So if you modify the prompt, it won't continue directly from there. It's a nice bit of implicit checkpointing. With the cursor, if you go back to edit part of the prompt, it doesn't automatically revert. It continues on the code base state, but it saves a checkpoint that you can easily check out. In my dream world, I wish they just integrate with Git rather than using these kind of arcane editor built-in checkpoints. It would be much nicer to use Git to say, oh, I made a change. 
hey, I made a commit, this is great, and then made another change, and here's a new commit, if you want to revert back, great, I just use like git commands to do that. And then once you've completed the big feature, then AI can know to squash those git commits into a single clean commit with all of the feature implementations. That would be amazing to build in, because for a lot of people, Git is not the most intuitive thing, and having to constantly worry about version control while using AI is another hurdle for most users to use these tools well. So that is something I'd love to see in both tools. Uh, one of the biggest issues I see with both AI editors currently is that if you touch multiple files, especially across a bigger feature, and then diff visualization, to be able to see the changes it made to the code gets quite annoying. Say WinSurf lists this out and then you have to click on this open diff and across the different parts in the chat and you have to scroll down to click on each one of them. While you do get a small nice bar inside the editor to navigate through, but it kind of gets lost as you accept changes and move through the code base. So I find that bar it's a nice initial design, but it still needs to be massively improved. Cursor used to do this really well. I have no idea why they removed the feature is. They used to have the composer window as a whole separate thing, which showed you all of the file diffs in a nice simple list on the left hand side. Even sometimes when it made edits across five to 10 different files, it was very easy to visualize and through, scroll through the change. Now they kind of forced the UI to be part of the sidebar, making it much harder to actually visualize the changes. I think it's a great change, if you're making a ton of small changes, but if you're well versed with your prompting and you have been able to generate huge changes consistently, a quality big changes consistently with AI, then this makes it kind of annoying. So Cursor, can you please bring it back? I look forward to that. A really nice side effect of all of this move towards a more agentic design for code changes is that now the chat clearly lists out the logic of the changes it's trying to make. AI clearly lists out the reason it's made this rename and why it moves certain member fields and how it's decided on the implementation method. So that part is actually convenient. This applies to both WinServe and Cursor. This is something I have enjoyed on both editors as part of that change and very much on par. One of the nice things that WinServe does, but and I'm not sure many people notice, is that as you go through the implementation, WinServe knows to fix up previous bad comments. And I've had places where WinServe just fixed up a comment after I've changed the implementation. Oh yeah, update description is doing this now and uh, as part of the code change it was ma making. So that was actually quite nice to see, fixing the NITs as they go along rather than just focusing on the work it does. Cursor has something similar, but it mainly focuses on linting. After every single one of the prompts, or sometimes in between, you can see this linting message, fixing lints in the middle of the chat, and then it will be cleaning up the code as they go along. That's super convenient. Cursor also added in its latest release the ability to automatically generate git commit messages. I previously had a part of my cursor rules template to do this, but now it's super nice that cursor builds this in and it's really convenient to be able to just click to generate the commit message. Note that because this is an AI feature inside cursor, so if you want to customize how you structure your commit messages, you can mention this directly in your cursor rules file those style changes and style guides will apply here. You can see in my git commit message generation here, it uses the context directly from my cursor rules file with prefixes of feet and then the description of the change. The cursor rules file is one of my favorite features inside of cursor because it's committed into your code base. It gets automatically applied across all of your AI prompts. So they are great at just setting the base context to AI for all of your code base's knowledge, be it file structure, coding styles, data access styles, and secret management, even things like git commit message styling. Having the ability to set that in code and commit it together is powerful. In WinServe, I've frequently had the issue where I have to constantly put these things 
as context inside the chat manually to get that consistent quality out. This is not a difficult feature to implement. I'd love to see the Windsurf team picking up on this one because it makes such a big difference if you're working across a larger code base where context just is not enough to figure out what exactly the code base is doing. If you're on a smaller toy project, great, that works perfect. But the moment you go beyond 10, 20 files, having that inferred context is not sufficient anymore. And you need to have quite a bit of that explicit context in there. So in the UX department, I think it's a clear win for Cursor just because of the amount of small tools that they've accumulated across the past two years of building. I think Windsurf will be catching up quickly in this department, so I'll be keeping an eye on that. The last but not the least, value for money for both of the tools. Windsurf is a clear win here. You cannot beat the pricing of Windsurf. They give you $10 per month with unlimited AI usage of advanced models like Claude, Claude 3.5 Sonnet. I do wonder <laughs> whether this is just a custom acquisition technique that they apply in the early days. So if you do like, definitely keep your subscription on because I'm pretty sure that will be going up in the near future. Knowing how much Anthropic and OpenAI charges for the APIs, I can't imagine how Codium can sustain these kind of pricing in the long term, especially for heavy users. If you're a person that uses AI code editor to code every single day, there's nothing that can beat the pricing of Windsurf, right? It's just $10 per month for that. And then so Cursor comes in quite a bit weaker here because even at their $20 per month, they have a limit on how many of those premium model messages you can ask. And it's 500. Uh, in most cases, if you're a daily coder that uses Cursor on its AI features, this is definitely not enough. I frequently had months which I had to upgrade to the $40 tier to be able to get access to all of those fast responses. So while Cursor does have all of those nice features, it does come at a slightly higher price point. In this department, Windsurf clearly wins out. There you have it. So even though I said at the beginning, like personally, I would still choose to stay with the cursor because of the amount of small features that I love that are just in cursor and not yet Windsurf. So I wouldn't be considering switching just now, but I can definitely see Windsurf actually like catching up. For a lot of other people, if you care a lot about the value for money, Windsurf is a clear winner here because it gets you, I say, easily 90% or 90% plus of cursor's features with only like half of the cost. So it should be a no brainer for people to switch if they don't really care about a lot of the other features that I mentioned. But here, I want to make sure that you have all of the knowledge of knowing the differences and the pitfalls for each one of the tools before deciding on which one you should move to. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other AI related videos just up there. Until then, happy shipping, and I'll see you in the next one.